Okay, here we go. Uh, D Tony the Biz. <laughs> okay. And there we go, Jedi. Alright, we're going to get this started. Zoning out with the PK Fires on the platform already. Wow, 43% already from PK Fires. It is pretty strong in this game. You can pick a direction to go out, but sometimes you have to mix up between jumping out of PK Fire and just going out of it on the left or right and then shielding. Some characters, specifically Kiro, can actually just go ahead and armor through it. I know if you go for a dash attack, you can actually just power yourself a little bit through it at some percent. So you have to be actually really careful when you go for it. So Kiro is... You have to really like check, it, can I go through PK Fire? Like, for example, Link, he can definitely go through it and punish Ness for PK Fire, so... All right. Oof, shield drop, got caught in frames. Just gonna get sent off stage one more time. Of course, PK Thunder, very strong tool Ooh. for both edge guarding and juggling. And just like that, low hit stun, gonna get caught there. And that's the back air to close things out. Already putting him off stage one more time. It's kind of interesting for Ness to go for PK Thunder, especially when Kiro's off the stage, because it's normally the pick and choose option for a lot of Ness mains. Like, do I wanna go set the down smash? Or do I wanna go for the PK Thunder? But for Kiro, because he has the hitbox with the upbeat, he's usually more, in more cases, fine. It's really difficult to challenge that. He tries to go for the Jedi off the stage. I respect the fact that Jedi just went for the normal recovery of that option. Don't want to waste his double jump. You know, I really respect Tony the Biz trying to go for these edge guards. These are one of Ness's we biggest weaknesses is yeah. that vulnerability during PK fire. Okay, gonna get that forward, so just PK caught. Thunder. Or excuse me, yeah. Just gonna interrupt that PK. Oh, wow. Alrighty. That is a tough situation to be in. I think at that point you just have to hold left and mash out and hope that uh, they don't catch you. But yeah. that was just a good conversion. For it's good too because he knows that most Nesses like to go. I'm sorry, he knows that most Carols like to go set up for the classic player, right? The cannonballs with the crown. Especially if you just take the time to go ahead and stop that before they start it. It's really good. Oof, getting a little bit hungry for these approaches, just barely outside the range for these dash attacks. And wow, I love that little extension with the PSI magnet. Just gets a little bit of hit stun to be able to get things started. You gotta watch out for when you, when you go for aerial pushes against the cannonball, especially when you're so close to it, uh, when K-Roll is so close to it, because at that point, like, K-Roll can just go ahead and re-inhale it and then send it back at you and go for your jump option. Yeah. Like, the one thing I do like about Tony the Biz is he's pretty pretty ecstatic to get into, like, Jedi's face, but the problem is Jedi is getting a lot of whiff punishes, and that's the problem where Tony's taking the percent from, right? He goes for a dash attack, Jedi gets the punish immediately with the whiff punish. Yeah, some, I mean, that's the issue with K-Roll in general, is that a lot of his options are pretty communal, either with his landing lag or just in general end lag on all of his moves. That time he's going to be able to make it through just because he went through the fire before it came out. But just in general, 159% as a K roll, this is oh pretty no. hard to come he back from. He should be from. using there, he should be using there, no. That's the thing what I was telling you guys about, right? You have to understand like what options do I have to counter PK fire and PK thunder. Because even though they are, they do seem polarizing, especially at this point in the stage, um, in the edge guard phase, for Jedi where he's just spamming the PK thunder, he could be going for Nair and actually armor through it. There's actually quite a few moves you can use to bypass BK Thunder, so unfortunately Tony the Biz did not know that. Yep. Yeah, I just thought maybe sometimes in the heat of the moment you just kind of forget that you have that option. Yeah. That is like, all right, my Nair can just armor yeah, through I that. Remember, so I remember, I remember. This, this character is annoying. I used to be like, <laughs> hell no, I am not getting hit by PK Thunder several times. Night Hammer is right. PK PK Thunder juggling is like camping in Call of Duty. That is hundred percent true. You're trying to go back and punish him for camping, but no, nah, man. It doesn't have C4 and a Claymore on the ground. Worst if you're playing Call of Duty Ghost, they got the dog in the background. Oh, my God. It just starts the whole loop, but that's what you need to understand. Like, what's what's my opponent's game plan? What can I do to counter it? Especially when he's just going to go ahead and use PK Thunder Spam. Alrighty. Moving on to FD. Let's see how this works out. I feel like... In general, it wasn't really the stage, it was just uh, K Roll's weaknesses, but well, let's see. Let's see how, yeah. how this goes down. Stage choices do really matter, and of course, having tri platforms versus no platforms can bring some options. I do feel like K Roll wants to have platforms, and I feel like you don't want to waste your directional air dodge like that. But at that point, like I said, in the heat of the moment, it's really difficult to just try to. You just want to get out of something, right? Right. You have a game plan until you get hit, and then you start realizing, like, shoot, I need to change things up. And Tony the Biz right there, just barely. <laughs> Uh, not surviving that down air look like uh, he's having fun with it though. Oh my god, oh. the down air chains. Of course, if they're grounded tech spikes, then you cannot uh, tech them on the ground. So you just have to take that and just hope that the hit stuns low enough for you to miss your follow up afterwards. Oh, Jedi is just having a field day. He's he's feeling really comfortable. So a lot of momentum swinging in Jedi's favor. For Tony the Biz, right? He's the one who's going to have to be making a lot of the approaches, but he also has to say, like, when can I find the punish against PK Thunder? There's a startup and he misses that forward smash, especially really crucial at the ledge. 
I think if he maybe went for a forward tilt, just a little bit faster move, he might have been able to catch him before he drifted. Yeah. That's just unfortunate uh, decision making. He's like, oh, I finally have an opportunity. Let me try and get the hard punish, which a lot of players will do that, but it just doesn't have to work out the way <laughs> you want it sometimes. Death. Back throws. Yep, that'll do it. Push up the ledge, 139 with Rage. Oh, there's the cross up there, but Tony the Biz not able to get anything started. He's still able to recover that up B. Really committing to that force match. So close, but just an inch away from Jedi. All right, Tony. You big goal right now, just get a stock. That's all you need, man. <laughs> all right, Tony. Yeah, that's, that's literally what it is, right? Like, you, you're, that's your goal. Get that forward and knowing that Jedi's going to go low. That's one thing that, like, a lot of nest mains like to do is they like to go for the low recovery. So that, that's your job to understand, like, hey, he's going to go for the low recovery. I need to get the punish there and for Tony the bitch just to go for a drop down forward there. Pretty good option, ledge guard phase. Jedi's, the way the Jedi is moving really is in infuriating. You, you, can't, you can't really tell if he's infuriating him or not, but you can tell Tony's scared of it, right? The way the movement for Jedi. Yeah, I because mean, he's moving at the ledge, and for Tony, he's literally just seeing a character move around that fast, and it's up to him to figure out, like, hey, if I get up, am I going to be hit by one of these three things? Going in with these PSI magnets, okay, I think Jedi's just kind of playing with his food at this point. Yeah. He is. Feel like he's having a lot of fun, maybe trying to get something for the next combo video. He's going to call Who Killed the Jedi or something like that. I don't know. But there we who go. There's the another Jedi. clip right oh there. Oh my god. <laughs> who killed, man, who murdered the croc? Who murdered the croc? That's, that's the combo video Jedi's making right now. Who murdered the croc? Well, anyways, Jedi will take it with a 20 and a handshake. Tony the Biz. Fortunately, we'll drop down the loser side of the bracket. Um, <laughs> it kind of sucks because you can kind of tell like he had just, he was really just stuck in a, in a loop, in Jedi's loop, right? He was, Jedi was just hitting him with everything and he was just trying to figure out how to play. Uh, press home. Oh, he's trying to disconnect the Joy-Cons. All right, now go to settings. Yeah, go to settings. All the way on the right. All right, now to go down to controllers. 